We're just chatting in the archives. Introduce yourself for the dear viewer. Who are you, my love? <laughs> I'm Travis Elephant, Um I am a writer um, and I work mainly in theatre and performance. Yeah. There we are. And this series is all about looking at the archives of queer history, how we can find ourselves within that, but what the future of queer history is going to look like in 100, 200 years when we our history is archived. What's that going to look like? Now, for you, your work is predominantly about taking that intersection of art and creativity and your identity. Where did that come from? Why did you begin with that? And what was your push for that? Well, it's funny that we're in the archive because um, I feel like my work was primarily about not being found in an archive. Um, I think that art has always been used to like document life, obviously. So then what art is archived is like inherently political. And so when I started to figure out when I was younger that I was a bit different to other people around me on the estate, I tried to Google other people that looked like me and I couldn't find anything in the UK that was talking directly about race and gender and gender non-conforming. It was so hard to find like UK-based black trans archives. And for me, when I started then making art, I was determined to make sure that you could find it by Googling. So it's the 50th anniversary of the first Pride Incredible. in the UK. I always like to think of Pride as, if we take it away from the context of gay Pride, uh -huh. how do you feel Pride as a feeling, as an emotion? Yeah, yeah, like, I like that. In yourself, for other people, like, how do you embody it? So for me, Pride is about taking up the space, but not in like, that kind of cliche, like, me, me, me away. But in, like, on the streets, in public, unapologetically. Mm -hmm. I never used to hold hands with my partner. Like, never. And I used to think it was because I don't like PDA. And what I really realised is that was, like, my cool way of being, like, I'm still afraid. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, I'm not making out with him in public. I'm not doing that. God forbid. I've got some... That's, that's my pride. Horror. Yeah, some pride. I've got some pride. I'm not going to lock tongues on the number 42. But I'm going to hold hands. I want to show off the nails. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Why should we be stripped of those joys of connection too? You know, why should we shrink ourselves for that? If you had to choose one piece from the gallery's collection that means something to you that you hold dear, what would it be? Well, okay, I think going to the gallery is all about the experience, right? I think that especially like galleries can be a bit stuffy. You know, and I know this, I can say this, I can say this. I, I was the resident artist at the Tate and so much of it was about feeling like I could be loud in the gallery and have an experience. So I remember when I went to see, it was years ago now, I see the Simon Frederick exhibition, Black is the New Black. And I went with a, like it was a special event. And I went with like a group of black, queer and trans people. And we went to look at it and we had the best time. Like the portraits were beautiful. It was stunning to see it like so, see all these figures that we know. And like Naomi Campbell next to like Alicia Dixon, like the vibes, <laughs> you know what I mean? And just seeing like all the different kinds of like black culture and like black British culture was amazing. Mm -hmm. But then the experience of going to the gallery with a group of black and trans people and like laughing, like taking up space again, taking up space and kind of walking through. We dressed up, we were giving portrait. Like we were giving as if we were going to be the last portrait. Like there was like a little frame which was just like that. It was amazing, and I, you know, I love any time that we see these buildings that have such a complicated history with race and blackness and colonization. I love when that gets brought to the forefront when we're in the room. It doesn't solve the issues, right? I'm not saying it plasters over it, but it makes it impossible to ignore that we were part of this history and present.